Okay, welcome back. Last time we talked about carbon. And so carbon is, is used to build up a variety of different molecules. And some of those molecules are the basic building blocks of the organic polymers, which are the molecules of life. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at how you build up these organic polymers. So those organic polymers, those, those are, that's my fancy way of saying, uh, saying something you already know. So you've heard of proteins and you've heard of complex carbohydrates and DNA and RNA and so an organic polymer is is just a, a long chain of some basic building blocks and so when we talk about complex carbohydrates like cellulose and starch and glycogen and we talk about complex lipids and proteins and nucleic acids those are all built using basic building blocks which is why I've got these little Legos here and so these different pieces we, we call them in, in biological terms and organic chemistry terms monomers and so uh, complex carbohydrates like starch and cellulose they're built Built up just by joining basic monomers, in the case of starch and glycogen, um, that monomer is glucose. And, and then proteins are built into, uh, into functional products using a monomer called an amino acid. So all of these macromolecules, the carbohydrates, the lipids, the proteins, the nucleic acid, the molecules of life, they have these basic building blocks. They're like Legos, basically. You can join them together. Um, and so what we're going to look at now is, is how you actually build those organic polymers. And so uh, the chemistry we use, and we're not too interested in the chemistry in terms of the actual reaction mechanism, uh, the, the chemistry kind of comes under two names. You can call it condensation chemistry, and you'll see why that is in a moment, or you can call it dehydration chemistry. Now, those two words actually do mean chemically slightly different things, but we're not going to worry about that. So if you say condensation, that's fine. If you say dehydration, that's fine. So um, is what we're going to do is we're going to take two monomers, and we, we could be building a protein here from amino acids. So these monomers over on the left here, that monomer there could be an amino acid, and that monomer there could be a different amino acid. If we were building glycogen, for example, the storage carbohydrate in your muscles and in your liver, this monomer would be glucose and this monomer would be glucose. So these monomers are just at the moment generic terms for a very specific building block and we'll get into the very specific building blocks. So this is a very general way of looking at this process. So let's go back to this word condensation and this word dehydration. So when we join, when we link two basic monomers together, two building blocks like two glucoses or two amino acids or two nucleotides to make nucleic acids, is what we're going to do is we're going to take one monomer and we're going to chemically join it to another monomer. And then we can just keep adding on more monomers to one end of this, of this dimer, which is just two monomers. So the reason this is called condensation chemistry is because is what we do is we take a hydrogen atom off of one monomer and we condense it with a OH, so that's an oxygen covalently bound to a hydrogen on a different monomer on a second monomer and when we add this OH to this H is what you basically get is H2O. There are two hydrogens and one oxygen and that's H2O. So this is called condensation chemistry because water comes out. So you've seen water condensing on your windows at certain times of the year and you've seen uh, condensation forming on uh, in the form of dew on plants and that kind of stuff so it's water coming out of something other people use the term dehydration at this level in in, in biology because you are basically taking two monomers and because you're pulling water out you're actually dehydrating them a little bit much like if you have a food dehydrator you're pulling water out so when we join two monomers we get one water molecule so if we have a monomer plus another monomer that's two monomers we get out one water molecule. So joining two water mo two monomers gives you one water molecule. So say to yourself, if I like join three monomers, how many water molecules do I get out? So if I've got three monomers and I link them together, when I link these two, that's going to give me one water molecule. And then when I link these two together, that's going to give me a second water molecule. So linking three monomers gives me two water molecules. So um, you can see the general rule there. And so to make the chain of monomers longer or to branch the chain, all we keep doing is adding in monomers. And every time we add a monomer in, we would react the OH group 
with an H that's already on the monomer, and we would pull out a water molecule. Now we can do it again, we've got three now, we add in another monomer, this OH here condenses with this H, and we end up with another water molecule, and so the chain just grows. And so this is how you make proteins, this is how you make glycogen, starch, uh, this is how you make nucleic acids, and you use a variation of this to make some of the, some of the lipids that we'll talk about, things like triglycerides and phospholipids. Um, so that's how we build these molecules up, but your cells also have to break these molecules down. These things don't exist indefinitely. Uh, these, there's a rapid turnover of these molecules in your cells, so they get built up, they have some functions, they might stop working, they need to be broken down because something else needs to be built up. And so we also have to break these, mono, these organic molecules back down again. So we've got to break down um, the organic molecules, and this is called hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is the breaking down of organic molecules using a water molecule. There are other ways to do this, but for right now we're going to do hydrolysis. And it's called hydrolysis because we're literally using water um, to break a bond and in the process the water gets split. So it's literally hydro, meaning water, and lysis, meaning to split or to break apart. So it's actually the breaking of water that is used to break the bond apart. So here's, um, here's a polymer. Uh, so there are four monomers being joined together here. So that's probably, you know, you see that from the previous slide. There are four monomers here. So what we can do is we use a water molecule and we basically restore the OH and the H when we break the molecule apart. So we've got four. We've, we've chopped one of the monomers off at the, um, from the end of the chain and we've used one of the hydrogens to add to the to the end monomer, and we've added an OH to the monomer that's been split off, and so that OH there plus that H there is H2O, and you can keep doing this, so we can do it a second time, we pull another monomer off. So building up is condensation chemistry, and breaking down is hydrolysis chemistry. Now we didn't talk about this as an important function of water when we talked about the properties of water, but this is a really important role of water, so this is something that you have to have water in your body to be doing, because you're constantly breaking these molecules down, um, and so this is a use of what we call metabolic water. So metabolic water is water that's just produced in your body um, through dehydration and through some other processes and some of that water is used to break organic molecules down. So that's the basics of building organic polymers up and breaking organic polymers down. Okay so next time we'll start looking at actual some specific uh, biological organic polymers.